welcome to the video lecture on marketing management today we'll cover the topic product marketing and services marketing while conceptually and technically there are no differences between marketing of goods and services operationally there are fundamental differences between marketing of services and marketing of goods the traditional mix of marketing namely product price place and promotion continue to play a vital role in marketing of services too but there are additionally three p's people process and physical evidence human resources play a potential role in delivering and marketing services as they are the catalysts who give the intangible tangible services a tangible touch and make it feel at the end of the people who pay for the services the services are communicated through appropriate delivery to the customers and if the delivery message is lingering and tangible in the minds if the people who obtain the services there will be requests for repeat rendering of the services thus increasing the sales turnover the people for marketing of services have to be therefore very carefully acquired developed trained and nurture to identify and cater to the needs of the customers the tailor made product of services of the organization process of service delivery is quite important in selling services procedures and methodologies for dealing with large clientele with multiferous requirements need be carefully evolved and institutionalized as a service marketing organization of repute physical evidencing of services is done by appropriate level of quality delivery consistency of service individualized service packages etc differentiating services marketing of services largely depends on differentiating one product from other in the market through improvisations and special creative means of innovative deliveries which exemplify the service divergence and complexity while endeavoring to distinguish the services divergence is bound to creep in the process of service delivery and to elevate this a certain amount of standardization may have to be restored to complexity in operation may take the service expensive and inconsistent service policies most service vendors use guidelines and procedures including comprehensive policies to define as to how to render the services to enhance satisfaction at the same time increasing the productivity and profitability it should be remembered that they should all be customer oriented warranties and guarantees offering guarantees and warranties for the service offered by the organization enables distinguishing of the services of course such a step should be cost effective and viable at the same time enhancing the standing and respectability of the service rendered peripheral services they are usually considered as add on services and they give a holistic touch to the whole operation of service providing the unique aspect of service marketing as contrasted to goods marketing are four in number intangibility as a four said the first and foremost is its intangibility the service is felt and savored rather than possessed inseparability the service provider and the product of service cannot be separated the haircut service cannot be sent by mail or packed and given at counters non storability the perishable aspect of service marketing arises due to its inability to get stored and hence it is considered perishable as wasted time of human resources deployed for servicing cannot be retrieved 
heterogeneity. The service deliveries are tailored to suit the needs of a specific customers and are delivered by different individuals resulting in heterogeneous service delivery at different points of received or outlet. Follow up and complaint resolution. Many organizations stop at rendering a service and thereafter do not follow up the same to check up as to whether the customer had any complaint or he is fully satisfied. Follow up steps not only differentiate a service but also give valuable feedback about improvising and improving service delivery. This is known as after sales service in selling of goods. In the case of a service, a follow up talk or visit will convey the appropriate feedback. Brand Valuation Brand valuation can be defined as the process used to calculate the value of a brand or the amount of money another party is willing to pay for it or the financial value of the brand. Goodwill arises when a company acquires another entire business. The amount of goodwill is the cost to purchase the business minus the fair market value of the tangible assets, the intangible assets that can be identified and the liabilities obtained in the purchase. Classically, goodwill accounting has been there, but brand is quite different from goodwill. Whereas goodwill in a business is transferred when the entire business changes over hands, the brand can be independently transferred irrespective of the entire business moving hands. Legal Framework in the Indian Context Trade and Merchandise Marks Act 1958 Section 38 clearly prohibits assigning of unregistered trademarks logos. Therefore, it is very important to ascertain as to whether the logo or brand is registered and patented as otherwise the entire valuation exercise would be like building castle in the air. Tax Aspects The gains accrued may be taxed at the hands of the receiver when he sells a brand and also in the case of buyer there could be implication of tax towards registration formalities. Further, the patents could be on outright basis or on a periodic royalty basis in which case the tax implications too vary appropriately. Leveraging While it is alright to value the brand by applying the various tools, the leveraging effect has to be clearly scrutinized. If the selling company has hardly anything in the form of tangible assets, but everything in the form of built-up brand image, the leveraging is said to be very high. It is risky to buy a highly leveraged brand as the whole business would hinge on the psychological impulse of the market towards the brand. The extent of leverage is measured by looking at the sensitivity, sensitivity actually with which the sales go up or down by the presence or absence of the brand as the case may be and the basic cushioning is determined by estimating the percentage of sales that would be accruing to the product when the even in the absence of the brand. Understanding Brand Brand could be a generic name or a number of products or a group of product. Example Britannia or a company or could mean one product only. Example Fair and Lovely. The criticality in brand valuing would be clearly to evaluate the channel domination which the brand commands. Brand valuation has the following perspectives. First one is whether the brand has got single product or has a generic value. Second, the extent to which the marketing channel is mimed by the brand. Third, whether there is any distinctive symbol, logo, specifically patented. Fourth, could there be possibilities of introducing more products? Fifth, do the human resources have vision of brand and are committed to maintain the brand value? Sixth, does the branch command a premium in the market on account of its presence.
after examining these issues the valuing methodology takes into account the following factors historic cost input in order to build up a brand development expenditure and promotional advertisements are necessary which would have cost the organization in addition the channel building channel loyalty channel domination for this brand are also gradually institutionalized the opportunity cost of developing all these are evaluated and taken at appropriate weight market potential the products coming under the brand would have a general market potential irrespective of the brand therefore a clear assessment of tangible level of potential without the brand has to be evaluated furthermore the discretionary addition to market potentially consequent to the brand needs to be estimated by studying the past market data and the revenues that were generated earning potential while market potential only gives an estimate of the future demand for the product with or without brand the earning potential is the future income obtainable from the products with the brand the estimation is done by adopting the usual projection methodologies the valuation of earning potential is done by two methods one is by simple capitalization of the average earnings by a predetermined rate of return and the second is by projecting the cash flows accruing on account of the brand and this and discounting such future cash flows to the sum up to arrive at the net present value fourth situation in product life cycle if the brand is for a single product the position at which presently the product is situ situated in respect of its life cycle is essential to be known higher the unexpired portion of the life cycle larger is the value of the brand in this regard any possibility of extending the life cycle by innovation or value adding will have to be also estimated before arriving at a conclusion fifth point is possibilities of introducing new products un under the brand some brands are strictly for one product and there would not be any possibility of introducing other products whereas there could be generic brands where introduction of other products may be possible but enormous market research efforts may be required and there could be still other brands where any number of new products could be easily accommodated in this regard the flexibility to, to accept more products into the fold in generic brand situation has to be evaluated the logic behind valuation is simple as it involves estimating the premium profit attributable to brand arriving at the weighted average of cost of capital and by sub subtracting the unbranched products profit so as to clearly know the influence of the brand in granting premium to the net profit market feasibility and brand the crux of brand valuation lies in clearly estimating the leverage the brand can give the product valuation of the brand depends on the feasibility or otherwise of selling a product with or without a brand premium coupled with the market strength given by the distribution channel mechanism built over a period of time this assessment has to be made by the surveys and appropriate calculations the stability factor consequent to brand identification needs to be evaluated some of the brands may contribute instability to the product of take by making it purely impulsive this can be assessed only through specific market surveys seventh point is potentiality for the brand to become international in valuing a brand this is a very important aspect as globalization has thrown more opportunities if the brand has international acceptability this means that geographically across the globe it should have easy readability and should convey an acceptable meaning 
some names are dangerous for example so in india means sobhagyavati the same means the rotten cabbage in chinese language therefore brand names need be carefully evaluated for their international acceptability throughout the world without geographical limitations brand valuation and stock options some of the companies give stock option to their staff members as an incentive or a motivational measure when stock options for the staff are high the brand value for transfer will be less because the brand would have reliance factor towards the staff though while valuing for its own internal purposes the same may be valued higher customer equity in brand valuation most of the organizations overlook this important aspect while brand equity is what the brand gives additionally to the product by value of customer surplus or consumer surplus customer equity on the other hand is what the customer gives to a product as an additional value contributing to consumer surplus this distinction is very difficult to make while valuing the brand in this regard specifically design market service to a great extent would be of help in segregating the percentage of value addition to a product by brand or by customers as otherwise even the customer equity would be included in brand equity and therefore finally the buyer may end up by paying a higher price than what it actually deserves that's it for this video thank you